Hey, Amanda, we're going to have to get them to sign in afterwards. We need to go. Okay. 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 No, they're not going to Okay. Just tell them to go. Take people away from the table. All right, we're going to be starting in about one minute. Please take your seats. We're so appreciative of you being here. If you're at the registration table, we would ask it that you come on in and grab a seat. Thank you. Please take your seats. Please take your seats. Thank you. I'd like to ask everybody I'd like to ask everybody to take a seat. We'd like to get the pro pro program going. Okay, folks, we're going to try to get the program going. I recognize that there is a huge amount of excitement, and I get it, but we're going to have to calm down. Thank you all. I was walking by, and I noticed that this gathering was happening, and I said, hey, this looks like a good party. 
and it turns out to be. So I want to thank you all for joining us on a truly momentous day as we celebrate and break ground on the Virginia Tech Innovation Campus. My name is Lance Collins, and I am the Vice President and Executive Director of the Innovation Campus, and I'm pleased to offer some opening remarks. Let me begin by recognizing a number of familiar faces in the crowd. Today, we are joined by an outstanding group of speakers with key ties to the Innovation Campus. Gene Case, the chair of the National Geographic Society, was unfortunately unable to make it to join us today, but we are excited to be hearing from Virginia Tech President Tim Sands, <laughs> Governor Ralph Northam, <laughs> Mayor Justin Wilson, Boeing CEO and Innovation Campus Advisory Board member, Dave Calhoun. Virginia Tech School of Engineering Dean, Julie Ross. Rector of Virginia's Board of Visitors, Tish Long. JBG Smith CEO, Matt Kelly. And Tara Laughlin, one of uh, uh, the Innovation Campus students and a member of our inaugural cohort of Boeing Graduate Scholars. I also want to give a special welcome to the Virginia Tech Board of Visitors in, in attendance, Shelley Butler Barlow, Sharon Martin, Chris Peterson, and graduate student representative Phil Mis Miskovich, and to the Virginia Tech Provost, Cyril Clark. And finally, I want a, a special thanks to the members of our Innovation Campus Advisory Board some of whom are here and some of whom are watching this on the live stream. So we have Sanju, I'm just gonna go through everyone and then we can, we can uh, recognize them. So Sanju Bonsal, the chair, Ted Colbert, Joe DeSimone, Lynn Dowdy, uh, Regina Dugan, Steve Mollenkoff, Russ Ramsey, Kathy Warden, and as previously mentioned, Dave Calhoun. Let's, let's <laughs> recognize them. For me, this journey began one year ago, but many of you in, it, in the audience have been working on this initiative since 2018. I'd like to take this opportunity to publicly thank you for your dedication, forward thinking, and the care you have put into each step of the process. We would not be here without you. Breaking ground on our first academic building represents a major milestone for the Innovation Campus, a campus designed to address a national need, namely tech talent at the graduate level. Our vision for the Innovation Campus to, is to be both a place and a culture that unlocks the power of diverse people and ideas to solve the world's most pressing problems through technology. Diversity isn't just a core value to me, it is a measure of excellence that will ensure the Innovation Campus delivers on its full potential. The master's degree will engage in teamwork that will bring students, faculty, and tech companies together to work on projects that teach more than just technical skills. They will develop professionals ready to step into leadership roles in their careers. I want to recognize the work of our chief architect, David Johnson, and his team for
from Smith Group, who have designed a truly iconic structure that will be visible from land, sea, and air. The magnificent gem-shaped structure is not an architectural flair, but rooted in the principles of sustainability. The facets are designed to maximize the solar energy that is produced by the photovoltaic cells that are lining the windows. And it is not just the exterior of the building that is forward looking. The interior spaces are arranged to encourage accidental collisions with connectivity as a core value to foster collaboration and accelerate the formation of bold new ideas. If you haven't already, I highly encourage you to take the virtual tour that can be accessed via the QR code on the lapel pin cards on your seats. Let me take a minute to talk about the power of connectivity. The location of the Innovation Campus will allow it to catalyze the broader tech ecosystem in the greater Washington, D.C. area. It will unite the three pillars of technology, the private and public sectors and academia to focus the D.C. region on the challenges that matter most to sustaining the U.S. technology edge in an increasingly competitive world. This building itself will be a place where diverse graduate students interact with faculty, businesses, and technology leaders and the broader technology ecosystem as they shape promising careers in computer science and computer engineering. We also envision the Innovation Campus as a place where even younger people are inspired. K through 12 initiatives, including with the Alexandria City Public Schools in our neighborhood, aim to create pathways to technology careers for students of all kinds. Thanks to the investment of Boeing, our first foundational partner, we are moving forward and developing these programs now. We will excite and encourage and prepare children to, to have joyful computing in their lives and support their interests and their families, especially in underserved communities, as they begin to explore technology in the classroom and as they learn about the possibilities of pursuing a STEM career. In the years to come, we want to continue to build, connect your ideas, resources, and energy as we build this campus and solidify our goals. Thank you for attending today, and thank you for being part of Virginia Tech Innovation Campus team. And now I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Tish Long. Tish is rector of the Virginia Tech's Board of Visitors, whose distinguished career includes serving as the director of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, and she was the first woman to lead a major U.S. intelligence agency in, in history. Tish is a valued Virginia Tech alumna and an irrepressible supporter of the Innovation Campus. Tish, welcome. Irrepressible. I, you know, I've been called a lot of things. <laughs> that one I have not been. So, uh, Lance, thank you for that uh, kind introduction. No, seriously, I am absolutely delighted to be here. What an amazing day and what an important day for Virginia Tech and for our community of which I am proud to be a part of. Um, and, and I'd just like to add my thanks uh, on top of Lance for all of the folks who are making today a reality. So many folks have been involved in getting us to where we are today, 
and Lance um, elaborated on a number of them. I'd just like to ask for another round of applause for everyone who has helped make today happen. And I'd actually like to reiterate a couple of points, um, Lance, that you made, because you're absolutely right. There is an urgency to making sure that the U.S. upholds its international leadership in advancing technology for our nation's security. Historically, the U.S. has enjoyed a preeminent global position with respect to technology development, but the competitive landscape has changed dramatically and that's really no longer the case. At least we're not there solely, and things are more challenging than ever. I would say our greatest opportunities and our biggest global com competitions and threats in the 21st century will be technology-driven. They already are. And to address society's greatest challenges and to ensure a safer world, we must lead the way. And it starts with a vision, a vision to build a campus just like this one. Again, as an Alexandria resident, I drive by this site quite often. I was, I was just here, as a matter of fact, yesterday. And I can already see the flurry of activity, the ground that's being moved, and of course, this tent going up. And I'm just so excited to have a front row seat to watch this magnificent campus rise from its foundation as one part of a larger vision. And I'll also emphasize what Lance said. If you have not um, seen the, the walkthrough, please you know, tap on that QR code and, and do that. It really is pretty extraordinary. But we are building more than just a place. We are building a culture, a culture that will connect the dots between education, invention, innovation, and commercialization, a culture that will unite private and public sectors with brilliant faculty and students, a culture that unlocks the power of diverse people and ideas to solve pressing problems in cybersecurity, artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and next generation wireless. And it all comes down to attracting and developing talent. And I am so inspired by Virginia Tech's efforts to create the most diverse graduate technology campus in the country. The most diverse. Not only as a proud alum, but a proud electrical engineering alum, I, I can really get behind that. So thank you, Lance. We must broaden access to higher education in high-tech fields. I can't tell you how many times in my career that I have witnessed the very best ideas and innovations being sparked when you have smart people from many different backgrounds, varying backgrounds, diverse backgrounds, who come together to solve important problems. And that's exactly what is happening here in Alexandria. As the, as the innovation campus grows into this new, magnificent home that we are breaking ground for today. Irrepressible was probably a good word, Lance. I just am so excited. And I am now happy to introduce President Tim Sands. And I will tell you, just on behalf of the Board of Visitors, it really, Tim, is because of your forward thinking that we are all here today. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, and thank you, Tish. This is an exciting and historic occasion. It's a day uh, many years in the making, made possible by a broad group of partners who are willing to support a bold vision to advance research, graduate education, and community engagement in the greater Washington, D.C. metro area. As I look around the tent today, I see many people who made a major impact on this project. And I recall conversations that began in early 2016 about Virginia Tech's 
aspirations to increase its presence in the region and a potential benefit to the Commonwealth, the country, and the world. Those conversations helped form the conceptual foundation of an innovation campus. And five years later, here we are. That's a pretty impressive timeline considering it took thousands of hours of coordinated hard work and activity by hundreds of people. It took a willingness to commit to a unique mix of academic and research space co-located with business and industry partners. It took the vision to plan an entirely new urban region, the National Landing, which spans two jurisdictions, Arlington and Alexandria. We're proud to be breaking ground on the Alexandria side, and we're glad to see Mayor Justin Wilson here today, along with many of his colleagues from Alexandria City Council, the city manager, and many of the dedicated city staff who have helped to get us to this important day. We deeply appreciate your support. The campus is own, yes, that's worthy of a. <laughs> The campus has already opened up incredible opportunities for partnerships between education and industry. Virginia Tech has enjoyed strong relationships with leading companies such as Boeing and Northrop Grumman for many, many years. This is taking it to a new level, and we welcome and look forward to engaging more and more partners. We have an exceptional roster of leading executives, as you've heard, serving on our advisory board, including Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun, will share some comments with you shortly. And also I'd like to thank uh, all of our board members for their insight and support. Your advocacy and the opportunity to develop and expand our partnerships truly expands our vision of what is possible. Another important reason we are here, able to break ground for our first building here today uh, with its completion slated for 2024 is the world-class work of JBG Smith, the master developer for the campus and the larger innovation district. And we would not be here without crucial support from Virginia's leaders at the state and federal level. People like Senator Mark Warner and Governor Ralph Northam have consistently championed the value of education as an engine of prosperity and a means to ensure that our commonwealth is a premier destination to live work and certainly to learn. Thank you. I want to add my thanks to all the partners who made this remarkable day possible. And now it is my great pleasure to ask one of them, Governor Ralph Northam, to come up to the podium and share his thoughts. By the way, um, happy birthday, Governor. I understand yesterday was your 45th birthday. Thank you. And it, as we, and as we welcome the governor, let's also applaud everybody uh, in the room that made this day possible, not only in this room, but as you've heard, many more watching on live stream, on behalf of Virginia Tech, we thank you all. Well, good afternoon. Tim, thanks so much, number one, for your leadership, also your kind introduction, and, and also your graciousness about my age. So. Uh, <laughs> We could probably add just a couple years, but uh, who's, who's counting? It is, it is truly a privilege for me to be here with you today at, at National Landing and this groundbreaking for the Tech Innovation Center. And, and there are so many, so many people to thank, but uh, just starting at the top, this took tremendous vision. It took tremendous leadership, and, and every team has to have a leader. And so the gentleman that was just here at the podium President Tim Sands, I just applaud you for your leadership at Virginia Tech. Please give him another round of applause. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago that my campaign office was just uh, down the street uh, in Crystal City, and wow, that's all I can say. What a transformation has taken place here at National Landing. And, Matt Kelly from JBG Smith, thank you so much for your leadership. It's, it's just amazing to, to see your work. And, 
And there are so many other people that have been part of this team, and really on behalf of the Commonwealth of Virginia, I say thank you. You had a tremendous amount of support from Richmond. I have looked around. We have a number of our legislators, our members of the House of Delegates and the Senate. And if I could just take a brief period, can our legislators stand up and just take a wave? I appreciate all of your all support. You know, on a lighter note, good things are happening in Hokie Land, and I just wanted to, to mention a, a couple things. Uh, I guess it's about a month and a half ago, I was invited to Hardywood Brewery, and I, I never uh, pass up the opportunity to go to one of our 300 plus breweries uh, in Virginia, but the, the date was special. It was to, uh, to promote Hokie beer. And, yeah. <laughs> I actually tried just a little bit on my birthday, which I think was, uh, uh, you know, important to do. And it's, I just want to recommend to all of you, it is, it is good beer. I was a little bit disappointed when I walked in. There's a, quite a lineup of beverages. And so I have ho ordered some hokey beer and hopefully it will be here uh, in the not too distant future. The other thing I would like to say, when I was there, I asked the hokey fans, I said, how is it looking this year? For football and they said we're going undefeated so congratulations Tim on being 2-0 and let's take it even further. <laughs> it, is, it is hard to believe it was nearly three years ago that we were here announcing plans for Amazon to build HQ2 and I, I really think that their decision and their arrival was key to us diversifying our economy and to Boeing and to other industries here. We have always and will always be dependent on the military and government contracts, but we need to diversify our economy, and Amazon was a big part of that, and it really reinforced the importance of investing in and growing our talented workforce. Our announcement that day in 2018 included a commitment to boosting Virginia's science and technology degrees. And it also included the news of Virginia Tech's new innovation campus where we are today. The Tech Talent Investment Program was a core part of what brought Amazon here to Virginia. By 2019, we had launched the program agreements with 11 universities to create, listen to this, 31,000 31,000 new computer science and related degrees over the next two decades. Meanwhile, Virginia Tech has been working toward this day, the official groundbreaking for the new innovation campus. I am, as you might uh, notice, a long-term admirer of the great work that Virginia Tech does. So it's wonderful to be here today to see this campus finally getting started. We, we always knew this would be more than a traditional graduate program. We have a world-class site right here in Alexandria's Potomac Yard. And we have a nationally recognized leader in Lance Collins. Lance, thank you so much for your leadership. Please give Lance a round of applause. And we have national leading companies like Boeing stepping up as our partners. This is becoming exactly what we envisioned back in 2018, a place where academia, government, and industry connect working to solve problems through technology. From the beginning, we viewed our investment in Amazon's HQ2 project as an investment in Virginia, and a large part of that was investing in our education system. As Tish said, if we can invest and bring talent both in our students and in our faculty, talent attracts talent, and it is a great equation. Virginia has the second highest concentration of high-tech workers in our great nation, and we have a robust tech talent pipeline, and we need to continue that. But we are continually finding ways to do more. This year, I'm proud to say we have funded the G3 program, Get Skilled, Get a Job, 
and Get Ahead, which pays for job skills training in high demand fields, including tech fields for low and middle income students. We're matching skills to jobs, and we couldn't do it without partnerships like this between government, academia, and industry. Those partnerships are vital to our success. In July, as most of you know, we were proud that CNBC named Virginia the best state for business, the only state to receive that accolade back to back. Our economy, I want to tell my fellow Virginians, is roaring, ending the year with a $2.6 billion surplus, over $48 billion of capital investment coming into Virginia, and our revenue at the end of August was up 19% from last August, so don't let anybody tell you that Virginia's economy is not doing well. I could not be prouder of what that says about the inclusive, common sense policies that we have put in place and how they encourage business investment. The strength <laughs> the strength of our higher education system, coupled with public-private collaborations like this one, was a key reason why we topped that list once again. It is a testament to Virginia's workers, our education system. Lance, I thank you for mentioning our commitment to diversity. It is that diversity that makes Virginia stronger, and we're getting more diverse every day, and we should all be proud of that, and our strong business climate. It is proof that when you treat people right, it's not the, only the right thing to do, but it's also good for business. This campus will be good for businesses. It will be good for government and the thousands of students who will come here for degrees that help them get great jobs and build the lives they want here in the Commonwealth. So in closing, congratulations to the Hokies of Virginia Tech and everyone involved in making this project a reality. Thank you all so much. Of course, uh, Governor, we could not have gotten this off the ground without the Commonwealth, so we are deeply appreciative of, of that support. Now I'd like to take uh, this time to invite uh, Dave Calhoun, uh, the President and Chief Executive Officer of the Boeing Corporation, to come share his thoughts. We are tremendously grateful for the support from Boeing, which became the Innovation Campus' first foundational partner this spring through a transformational gift of $50 million to the Innovation Campus that will support scholarships, help us recruit world-class faculty, and fund STEM pathways for underserved students in the K through 12 uh, range. We gotta, we gotta recognize that. <laughs> Their gift will jumpstart our efforts to create the most diverse graduate technology campus in the United States. And Dave, it's a pleasure to have you join us today to celebrate the groundbreaking. Thank you. It's great to be with all, all of you. I don't think he mentioned once in there that I'm a hokey. 70, 79, just, just to be specific. I just have a couple of quick remarks. We announced our gift a little ways back and we talked about the reasons why and I think we had plenty of attention. So my remarks are a little more personal. Uh, 2018, I got a call from a very close friend, believe it or not, who happened to be my roommate in college, who leads the advancement uh, team here at Virginia Tech. His name's Charlie Flieger and he's in the tent here somewhere. Charlie, I see you. Yeah. Just a couple of comments. Uh, Charlie reached out to me. I was working at an investment group at Blackstone. 
and he described what was happening with Amazon, why they were interested in the area. But most importantly, he talked to me about the partnership between the state of Virginia and Virginia Tech. Because we get a lot of those calls. And some of them are credible, some of them are big on ideas, and some of them get done. Not as many as we start with. This one I never had a doubt, never had a doubt. The state of Virginia, over all these years, Virginia Tech, a land-grant institution, has stepped it up on a number of occasions to extend its intellectual reach around the state in support of the economy of the state and in support of the students it educates. They're incredible at it. So never once, never once, did I doubt that it would happen. I appreciate our leaders. I really do. Being here with all of you and know that they follow a legacy of leaders in this state that have gotten it done for the people. And I, I have incredible high regard for that. I want you to know I'm not a citizen of Virginia. I never have been. But my respect for what they accomplish is great. And I think this is a living, breathing example. We started this with a vision. I was fortunately involved at the very beginning. What's it all start with? Finding a leader. And we did. We found a great leader. A leader who's done this before and been involved in a project very similar to this in another major urban jurisdiction in New York. And we got it done. And Lance agreed to join us and lead this team because of the attractiveness of the opportunity that it represents for everybody. So anyway, I, my appreciation for Lance for joining the team. And I have to tell you, from day one, vision development, strategy development, coordination with the campus in Blacksburg and the leaders in Blacksburg for which we are dependent on for the success of this institution, all got done in lockstep. And now we're at a groundbreaking, which means there's no turning back. There's no turning back. So I'm very proud of all they've accomplished, and I never doubt that they would. And it's because of the leaders that are sitting up here in the front row. So many thanks to, many thanks to you. I'll just pile on with everyone else. About Boeing, uh, think about our $50 million gift as we are underwriting the diversity of this student population. Boeing's a company that fights around the globe. We compete with the biggest players in the globe. We serve a U.S. military that protects the freedoms that we all, uh, we all benefit from. And we also connect the world by virtue of our commercial airplane business. So we put people in touch with each other so that someday, hopefully, we'll never have to reach into that military capability. We view our, our role in the world as fundamental, and we are one of the big ones. And the fight to win is all about talent. And it's all about the technologies and degrees that will, be, that will ultimately be had in this institution on this campus. And then the one thing that our country has that most don't, the one thing that is appreciated around the world, not always appreciated here, is the diversity of our population and the opportunity we can provide to them. And that is exactly <laughs> that is exactly what the Boeing gift is all about, to underwrite those students. So I wasn't meant to introduce my Next speaker, but I will. So Tara Laughlin, who I just met 15 minutes ago, is one of a number of Boeing scholars who are represented in this room. There's a lot of big intellectual thoughts that we can lay in front of everybody about why this is so critical. At the end of the day, the only voice that matters is going to be Tara's, because she is the embodiment of our future, period. All of her peers, they embody our future, the way they think about it. No cynicism there. Full speed ahead. Full speed ahead, and I'm confident you'll get that. Anyway, I will be. Ha I am happy to introduce Tara to the podium. Thank you. Thank you so much for that introduction. Hi, everybody. My name is Tara. I graduated from Virginia Tech in 2019 with degrees in computer science and creative technologies. I had such a good time at Virginia Tech. I just had to return for my third degree my master's in computer science here at the Innovation Campus. I'm so thankful to be able to be here with you all today, getting to share my story. So a little bit about me. My background before undergrad was actually in art. I had never taken AP computer science. I wasn't interested in robotics, and I've never built a computer from scratch. 
So I didn't think it was possible for a student like me to be successful in the program because I didn't fit the mold of what a typical successful student looked like. But as I continued my education, I learned how valuable my different perspective was and how having my degree in art actually allowed me to thrive. I'm passionate about the software that I develop, but the thing that I care most about is people. I care about how people interact with software and how well they understand how to use it. My goal is to create a movement in the software industry that's focused on accessibility and inclusion. Empathy is the backbone of successful software, and creating things with all kinds of people in mind is the direction that I hope this field will go. <laughs> Getting to learn from people with different perspectives is also incredibly beneficial. During my time at Virginia Tech, I only had one female computer science professor. But even though it was only one, seeing a successful and confident woman stand up there and speak to us was incredibly empowering. And it made me think that someday, I might stand in front of a crowd and get to share my successes in the world of technology. And so this is one of the main reasons that I wanted to return to graduate school. I want to make a difference in the field that I work in, but I honestly just didn't know where to start. And the Innovation Campus answered everything that I'd wanted. This new campus opens doors to the world of technology for people who otherwise would have never gotten the chance to experience it. With the campus located in an area filled with diverse communities, we not only receive a world-class education, but we also gain perspective from each other. And if I've learned anything over the last seven years of my educational and professional journey, it's that we all have something that's worth sharing. I am so grateful to be able to return to school, and I'm really excited to be part of the first group of Boeing scholars to enroll. Without Boeing's generosity and the new innovation campus opening up right in my backyard, this opportunity would not have been possible for me. So I feel really lucky to be a part of Virginia Tech's mission to bring diverse perspectives to the world of technology. Thank you so much, it's been a pleasure. So I'd like to echo uh, Dave Calhoun's comments earlier. I think we need to give another round of applause. That was a terrific speech, Sarah. So what you all probably don't realize is that I actually have a partner in crime. I am pleased to welcome Julie Ross, who's the dean of the Virginia Tech School of Engineering. And I want to take this opportunity to thank Julie and her colleagues in the School of Engineering for being fantastic partners and advisors during the planning stages for the Innovation Campus. Julie, your counsel has been tremendously important to me and I very much appreciate it. Come on up, thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's wonderful to be here. The College of Engineering is proud to be working with the Innovation Campus team to help the state meet its goal of doubling the technology workforce. Tara, you inspire me. Your route to graduate school may be a bit unusual, but it shouldn't be. You epitomize what's so exciting about this project and about Lance's vision of building the most diverse graduate tech campus in the country. You remind us why our work here is so important. Because this is not about building a pipeline, a single path from here to there for all students with one narrow entrance. It's about building many pathways to open doors and provide opportunities to students like Tara who may not fit traditional graduate school molds. It's imperative that our graduate body reflects the Commonwealth and the global communities we serve. And as we create new and different pathways to our programs, we must do so in a way that brings the diversity of thought and lived experience to our campus. What starts in our classrooms and our labs helps to advance the boundaries of engineering in ways that benefit us all. We have big and complex problems to solve, and we can't do that without all the ideas and the creativity 
that diversity of experience brings. We also can't do it alone. We need partnerships. Partnerships with leading companies like Boeing and Northrop Grumman. Partnerships with other Virginia universities to smooth the path for their graduates to apply to the innovation campus. And partnerships with Alexandria Public Schools and other K-12 systems to enhance science, technology, engineering, and math opportunities for all students. Virginia Tech, through the College of Engineering, has a long history of graduate education in computer science and computer engineering, both in Blacksburg and here in the DC region. As a result of our commitment to the state, we've seen tremendous enrollment jumps in these programs in the past two years, growth fueled by these new pathways and partnerships, as well as our rapidly growing undergraduate programs in Blacksburg. We are here today to celebrate the, celebrate the construction launch for a new academic building that will not only give us room to keep growing, but also provide spaces to explore new models of learning and discovery. And through our efforts, we will attract and nurture top talent. We are Virginia Tech Engineering, and that's why we're here at the Innovation Campus. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce JBG Smith CEO, Matt Kelly. Matt and his team at JBG Smith have been a great partner in developing the vision for the innovation district our campus will anchor here in Potomac Yard. Hi everybody, thank you Dean Ross. It's terrific to see all of you, appreciate you all coming out here braving the heat, putting shoes on your feet for the first time maybe in weeks or months for some of you. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here. These are the fun moments, as some of us were discussing earlier, in projects like this that take years and years of toil and partnership and coordination. Uh, and so it's great for us to be able to celebrate them together in person. Uh, I'm incredibly uh, proud of being associated with this project, and I know I speak for the entire JBG Smith team when I say that all of us are. As Dean Ross just said, my name is Matt Kelly. I'm the CEO of JBG Smith, the master developer of the Virginia Tech Innovation Campus and the broader innovation district here in National Landing, from here all the way up through Amazon's HQ2. Back in 2017, when we began courting Amazon alongside the Commonwealth to make Northern Virginia home to HQ2, one of the main points of attraction that they had to the DC region was our strong base of tech talent. And Virginia Tech's innovation campus brings that right next door and delivers on a future of diversifying our economy and broadening that talent base for many decades to come. Many partnerships got us here. And we work with partners of all kinds, all across the landscape from government entities, academic institutions, private entities. And I would tell you, I've never before seen an effort so coordinated and so aligned with a shared vision and a drive that pushed this faster than even the best conceived single owner, single operator project. It's really extraordinary. And I credit the leadership of everybody that you've heard from thus far, uh, Lance Collins, Tim Sands, Governor Northam. It has really been extraordinary to see folks come together and keep up a, a sustained effort in order to deliver on a vision like this. Once complete, this broader innovation district anchored by the campus will be home to a new generation of educational, commercial, multifamily space spanning over four million square feet including public green space, affordable housing, the new Potomac Yard Metro Station, the groundbreaking for which was our last reason to gather in this very same spot. I think it was a little cooler that day. 
It'll also be home to one of the first truly operational 5G smart cities at scale in the entire United States. <laughs> Bringing academia, industry, and government together will create impactful programs, transformative research, and the leadership necessary to fuel the innovation economy of the future. This bold project was designed to unite a diverse faculty and student community with partners in the private sector and government, both in Virginia and on Capitol Hill. We are incredibly grateful to our partners at Virginia Tech for stepping up to put forth an incredibly compelling vision for this campus and to the dedicated Alexandria City staff for embracing that vision. And with that, I would like to introduce a man who needs no introduction, but my friend and Alexandria Mayor, Justin Wilson, whose leadership helped make all of this possible. Good afternoon, everyone. I feel like I was a little set up, uh, Matt, uh, by being on the other side of the agenda from our Boeing scholar, uh, but uh, the future is going to be extremely bright, and we will all be working for her at some point uh, very, very soon. So uh, thank you all uh, so much for being here. Let me uh, begin uh, by thanking uh, Dr. Collins, President Sands, Rector uh, Long, for sharing your vision with the city of Alexandria and bringing it here uh, to the city. We appreciate that, and we are so excited to be the host uh, of this campus. Um, let me uh, thank you, Mr. Calhoun, uh, for your investment in this campus and making this uh, come to reality. Um, if you're interested in, in changing that and becoming a citizen here of, of the city of Alexandria, our economic development partnership people will find you afterward and uh, your headquarters would look very nice, just north, just west, you tell me, we'll make it, we'll make it happen um, here. Um, Governor, uh, thank you so much uh, for being here again. Uh, every time you come here we make large announcements, um, but as Matt noted, uh, next time, maybe we could do this in April or October, um, maybe not, not January or February. Um, I am joined by a number of my colleagues uh, from the City Council. I want to make sure I introduce them. Uh, Councilwoman Amy Jackson, who is a Virginia Tech alum, is here. <laughs> Councilman uh, Kanik Aguirre, who is an alum of a state university in a state south of Virginia. You know, this does not uh, just happen. Um, you know, Matt talked about the speed at which all of this occurred. That does not just happen. That happens because of an incredibly dedicated staff uh, that has worked hard from the very beginning, long before 2018, to make this happen. And so I want to recognize um, our city manager, Mark Jinks, and our entire city staff, our planning staff, our transportation, environmental services, housing, code administration, everyone who worked so hard to make this happen. So thank you to all of them. I want to recognize uh, our Alexander Economic Development Partnership, led by Stephanie Landrum. A a graduate, I believe twice, of a university in Charlottesville that some people are aware of. I'm a graduate of Virginia Commonwealth University, so I do note that the last time we met Virginia Tech in basketball, we won by 30, so just, just want to just wanna make sure that's clear um, out there. So, you know, about three years ago when we were gathered uh, a couple hundred yards from here, and celebrating a, uh, the arrival of a, of a company that some of you have heard of um, just north of the border from Alexandria. I told everyone who would listen, the media and everyone else, that we have buried the lead. The most exciting part of that announcement is the innovation campus coming to the city of Alexandria. This Long after all of the companies that are partnered with this are, are gone, Virginia Tech will continue to be here in the city of Alexandria churning out the workforce that our commonwealth, our community is going to need long into the future. We are so excited that so much of the plans that we have shaped for really a quarter of a century 
are coming to fruition on this site thanks to the partnership of Virginia Tech. We're going to have a building with state-of-the-art architecture, sustainability components that you've heard about, tied in with transportation, all of the housing components. This was the largest investment in affordable housing the Commonwealth's ever made was part of this deal. You know, all of the climate policy we're going to be bringing uh, to, to fruition here. This is the, the cultivation of so much that we have tried to work on for so long in this city. But ultimately, it's not about the buildings. The buildings will be amazing, and we're really excited about that. It's the people that will be in the buildings and the people who will leave those buildings. And we are so excited uh, to, to see the embodiment of this vision come to reality in the buildings here in the city of Alexandria. If you get a chance, go to the Innovation Campus website and read the strategic plan when you get a chance. You'll come away inspired because it is not just an outward facing strategic plan. It is not just looking at churning out graduates who are going to go out into the community and change the world, and they will do that, but it's also inward facing, investing in this community. And so we're very excited about the partnership with our schools, the Alexandria City Public Schools, one of the most diverse school systems in the United States of America. When a school system with over 60% of our students coming from poverty and over a third English language learners partners with Virginia Tech who's committed to diversifying the workforce, great things will happen. And they will happen here in the city of Alexandria. We are so excited to have this partnership. We look forward to breaking ground today. Thank you so much for investing in the city. Thank you. This concludes our speaking program. Our speakers are going to move over now for the traditional groundbreaking.